Hey guys, what's happening? So, about four and a half years ago, I made a video of me rebuilding my drive shaft. And it's starting to kind of thump again. I think it's, I mean, I felt a little bit of play in there in one of the U joints, but yeah, it's starting to make a thump. Uh, it's really just low speed, low speed thumping. Like it usually goes away, and that's typically usually what happens with the drive shaft. It will, a lot of the issues that, as it spins faster will go away. So, um, yeah, I've had this problem for over 20 years, so um, I've had her do this several times. But I think this last time, I don't know if just... I mean, this is sort of like my daily driver, but I don't drive it a lot. I mean, it's not... I don't drive it very far. I just... I don't like to drive my, my the diesel truck, because it's not good for stop-and-go driving. So I just... My round-the-town car is like this little the Bronco. Um, but, yeah, I'd like to figure out what's up with this drive shaft. It's starting to make a thump. But um, I did get some... I did actually buy a whole set of uh, new universal joints just in case. I even actually have extra ones of the greased ones. Uh, but from what I was reading online, the, the non-greased are actually stronger and better. Like they're just a better design overall. I mean, they're a little bit more expensive. But that's kind of like why I think maybe I didn't grease it in time. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, they say you're supposed to grease them every 3,000 miles, I guess. But... I don't think I've, it's probably been more like 10 or 15,000 miles, I don't know. So, it might have been my own fault, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe I said, the Bronco has a slight lift on it too, so, um, yeah, the extra stress, even though I do actually have my drive shaft tilted up, I have some uh, shims that tilt the, the rear 49 inch up to make it better aligned, still there is extra, extra stress on it, because it's lifted a little bit, so. But, uh, all right, let me take that. I have to take the drive shaft off. I mean, obviously, it's it's not hard. I've made our videos about it. I mean, it's just <clears throat> so four, uh, eight and eight eight bolts. So you know, four in the back, four in the transfer case. So I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna bring it back up to my workbench here. Okay, here's the drive shaft. I think I've had this thing off at least ten times or more. I mean, I've pretty much worked on every single inch of this Bronco. Um, different engines, transmissions. Pretty much rebuild everything. Um, so yeah, I'm familiar with the process. But let me show you something else I noticed. I hope you can see that. The yoke, the nine inch yoke. See how this is moving, the nut stain. See that? So there's play in the splines. I might be able to tighten that down and get a little bit better, but, and I think I have a little bit here on the transfer case too. Just a little bit. I mean, that would really only affect it and make that noise if you're speeding up and slowing down where it's, you know, giving it power then also then going back and giving it a drag. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's causing that thud noise, though. Usually when I hear that thudding noise, I mean, like I said, I've done this many, many times, so usually it's the, someone going on the drive shaft, but it suddenly goes pretty tight. We'll go back and look at it real fast. All right, so you have to be really careful here. So this nut does the preload, right? So in the bearings, right? This is what pulls the bearing against the bearing race. So if you over tighten this, it's gonna create a lot of friction on the bearings. So you don't wanna overdo that. Um, normally there's a, so I tightened it a little bit, you know, just a tiny bit. Um, but yeah, so I got rid of the play. So that doesn't mean that the splines are worn out. So I'm gonna see how long I can go with this. Um, I'm gonna go back and uh, look at my U joints too, but yeah, that's you have to be really careful with this. Do not over tighten this. Like I said, I mean the bearings will wear themselves in, so eventually this will become loose again. But yeah, do not do that. It will, it will, this will actually generate a lot of heat in here. After all, these U joints feel pretty good. I, mean, I don't feel any slack in them. Now this one, there's no slack in it, but this one feels a little crunchy. And hope you can see that. And if you can, hopefully you'll like see those bearings. Those things are getting thrashed right there. See that? That's how they're supposed to look. Long. These ones are getting broken up. See right there? There's a space in there. So, I do actually keep, like when I, re when I last time I replaced this, I think I kept some of the old ones. Um, I always keep extra E-joints at the back of the Bronco anyways. In case I'm off-roading, I gotta fix it. But, I might just see if I can find a cap. I mean, I do actually have those three new Spicer greaseless ones, but... 
I don't know, man, because if I have to fix my rear end, you know, fix, figure that out, that might be pretty, pretty expensive. So, don't know if I want to put my money to that or just, I don't know, I got to think about it. I mean, now that I have this thing, I should just take this whole thing apart and make sure everything looks correct. So, I'm going to either use, you can use a hammer or a socket. I'm just going to use my arbor press. I, mean, I have a bearing press back there. In the last video, I think I just hammered them out. Um, yeah, all right, obviously take the, you know, most pair of pliers, take the clips out. All right, so if you wonder what this is, it's a Prusa i3 Mini. Um, I actually fixed 3D printers, uh, with like a side hustle. All right, um, so the fact that I saw, even though it felt fine and tight, that you had needle bearings that were actually blown out, I'm going to take all these off and inspect them, uh, just to make sure I'm not missing needle bearings or they're all worn out. Look at how much uh, pain this was. Um, it's such a, it's just a cardone section, it's, it's kind of difficult. So, yeah, bearings coming out of the caps. So, I think I'm just going to put the new uh, non-greasable, the actual better ones in there. So, everything I've read so far, they're, they're uh, online, that they're actually better. You know, they're actually stronger, they don't have like the... Like, on these ones right here, see they're weakened, they have a hole through there to go to the grease. So that makes them weaker. Also, they have like an anti, uh, like a spring thing to keep them off the bottom of the, the roller thing there, the cap. Um, yeah, and they are more expensive too. So, all right. All right, so here are the spicers. Here they are. I'll put a link down below. I got them. Got my Amazon. They came with a different, bunch of different little the retainers, different size. I think they're different size retainers for different size, uh, probably axles or whatever. But the axles, I mean, uh, drive shafts. Alright, so, yeah, I guess they have much, like, a double seal, and, uh, they do, actually, what's weird is they still have that hole. Um, so I'm surprised they actually drilled the hole. I mean, not so like, centrifugal force will push the grease out, you know? Maybe they fill this out and fill this with grease, and centrifugal force will keep this thing packed. Um, I mean, using a C-clip is actually easier, but what you, what you need to do is sometimes these things bind up if they're not going in straight. Like this one is higher up, so you got to crush it in just a little bit more. Yeah, mine are actually really tight. Yeah, now it's bringing back memories. This this takes a while for me. Um, but one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to pound this in like this because these needle bearings will go flying everywhere and you'll have to take it back out. So either use a C-clip, some kind of press, but slowly get it in there. And from occasionally go in here just to make sure that you can go all the way in. Like you didn't lose like a clip already, like, like needle bearings. Like this should go all the way in. So you'll, you'll know if a needle bearing like fell flat, you know, is if you can't get it all the way in. So then you, it's a, you have to take it all back out again. All right, these are very difficult to install. It's because they're under spring tension, you know. It's like you have to, it's getting these on. It's, it's way harder than the uh, greasable. All right, so. Got the uh, juke or drive shaft back together here, and this is actually the first time we actually had multiple different size shims come in a, in a U joint kit. Like these are actually did different thicknesses. So originally I had these steel ones on there, and then uh, I went back to the copper because the copper is the thinnest. So the, the, it's, it was hard to get used to because I'm not like I said I'm not used to using the greaseless ones. Um, is there uh, they have pre tension on them? Because they have like this little plastic cap in them, if I have an extra one, but it, it's like a, it's almost like a tensioner, you know, it puts load on, on the end of it, you know, so it's, it's almost, almost like a springy, you know, whereas the, the grease, the grease ones didn't actually have that springiness to them, like you, you could push them in, it was all, it was springy, the caps are springy, so I guess that puts constant tension on the outsides, so it doesn't want to wobble back and forth. Um, all right, I gotta put this back on the Bronco, and uh, hopefully that clunk goes away. One last thing before I put that on. I don't know if that you can see what I'm looking at here. Maybe that'll focus. Made in the USA. That's surprising. I mean, because everything now is like made in China, so it's like I'm like Moog goes like it's hit or miss with Moog, but um, yeah, that's cool. It's still made in the USA. I got the crankshaft back on. Make the crankshaft, the drive shaft back on. Um, See, I actually have the degree shims 
don't know if you can see that back there, but there's some shims in the kind of the leaf springs. And see how that's like almost straight right there? That's how you want it. You don't want it to be at an angle. It just puts unnecessary stress on it. So yeah, I specifically put shims in there to make it degree like that. Alright, so a little status update here. And the thud is gone. So I mean, I've, this, this truck has been my daily driver for over 20 years, so I kind of have a feel for <laughs> Like, I know how it feels, how it's supposed to feel, and I know when there's a problem. Um, but, uh, alright, so uh, future videos coming in for the Bronco videos. Um, I got a Tom's Bronco uh, adjustable uh, track bar. So, it's not off that much, maybe a half inch, three quarter, eh, it's, it's off though. Like, uh, you know, when, when I did a... Uh, a lift on it, it's like a three and a half inch lift, one inch body lift. It, you know, obviously, like, like every other person with a Bronco lift, it, the tires want to go to the right side. Um, so it's about an inch, maybe three, I don't know, it's it's, it's a little bit over. Um, but, you know, a while back I got an adjustable uh, drag link for the, for the steering because I converted the steering over to a 4x4 four four rock collar box. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to get that fixed uh, because my one of my... Uh, the track bar, the bushings is bad, so I was like, man, if I have to buy the bushings, I might as well just do the track bar, too. So, I mean, it's $20 versus $100, but, you know, I'd rather just get it done right. So, but I do actually have the track track bar drop-down link, you know, already, so that's why it keeps me even. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of rambling about this too much, but, all right, so that's going to be a future Bronco video. Um, that should be coming here in probably a couple days, week. But, all right, so I got three videos to upload, different Bronco things I've done in the last month or so. You know, the electrical system, um, everything's too. Oh, yeah, the stereo system, too. Redid the whole stereo console and wired it up again. All right, guys. Having fun. Cool.